All right, friends, good to see you all. Look at this, we got 28 people in here today. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, such good people. Um, look at this, uh, we get to talk today about putting lead conversion on autopilot. Um, super excited to discuss systems, nerdiness, and there is not a better systems person out there than Jackie here, so I'm excited. <laughs> That's um, really kind. <laughs> you have earned it. Um, Jackie, we'll give people another minute to get in here. We know how real estate people roll. They're always a few minutes late. So if you all want to go get your, I don't know, coffee or wine or whatever you're drinking at 1203, no judgment. Um, you know, we, we don't judge here in the hatch world. Um, everybody's got to live their life. Um, Again, what we'll be talking about today is we'll be talking about putting lead conversion on autopilot. Uh, a big thing we're gonna talk about is um, the ins and outs of Hatch systems and what it's doing. Um, so Jackie will walk through some of that. Um, we'll give you all some takeaways, even if you don't use or want to use Hatch systems on some nuggets that will help you with lead conversion um, and some must do's. Um, but I think we need to start here, Jackie. We're just going to get rolling today. Um, and again, it's all recorded. So you all will get a recording of this webinar. So if you um, forget something, no big deal. You'll get that recording. Jackie, the lead conversion game has changed a little bit since you were in the game even, what, now two and a half, three years ago? And uh, I was in the game. I haven't really been in the game personally. I coach and train people, but I haven't been in the game boots on the ground now for six, six years, five years, something like that. Um, give a little perspective on how you've seen it change, Jackie. What, what would you say are some of the biggest things? Yeah, well, I came into real estate, geez, six years, almost seven years ago as an ISA, which seems like forever ago. Right. Um, and, you know, I ISA'd in two different CRMs, one of which was Sierra, but this was well before you, you know, this whole hatch systems <laughs> greatness was created. And so, um, you know, it was a lot of blindfold going at it blindly and, and just hoping that you were going to make a difference that day, hoping that you were going to get connected with a lead, hoping you were going to remember to follow up with people just, but there was really no rhyme or reason or process. And so you fast forward to now and the resources that we have available because of systems and messaging. And then you even think about how the CRM, especially in terms of Sierra, for instance, has just been so innovative over the past six months alone. I mean, it's, it's beautiful what is now available to help you be able to not only connect with leads, but leverage your time, uh, scale the amount of people that you talk to, and then be able to organize everything. Yeah, you're nailing it. We always kind of joke, jokingly say the kids today got it way too easy. Way too um, easy. It's, it's uh, you know, when, when I got into the game, just kind of, I'm going to feel like an, an old, old man here talking about myself. Back in my day. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm 31 years old. Um, but back in my day, <laughs> uh, when I got into this game, there was no automation. <clears throat> Heck, uh, CRMs, the capabilities for the most part was literally just scheduling tasks for the future to follow up. Um, and my whole, the way I created conversations, because that's really like when we boil down what an ISA does, right? Their job is to have conversations with people to identify their needs, wants, and desires, and potentially turn those into appointments for your team. Um, and if you don't have an ISA, you are the ISA, um, very simply put. So as when you're wearing that lead conversion hat, what it really comes down to is you're having conversations with people. And the only way you could have those conversations when I got in the game eight-ish years ago was literally picking up this thing, which looked much different. God, I feel weird. Uh, yeah, exactly. Looked way different. Um, yeah, the flip phones, or we just started getting the, the first ghetto smartphones. Mm -hmm. um, and we would just sit there and I'd sit there and dial and dial and dial. Uh, the, the big tech back then, the innovative tech was dialing, you know, built in dialers that would allow you to call, you know, three people at a time. And that served me incredibly well, frankly, during my time as an ISA. But as I was coaching and mentoring our department and others, 
really since then, there's been a lot of changes. And I think the biggest thing we need to talk about is the fact that one, people answer the phone much less often today than they used to. And demographically that is trending towards less and less answering of random phone calls. Um, when we look at it, generally older demographic answer their phones because that's what they've done their whole lives. Um, I've always told the story, if you take my brother and my grandma and you put them in a room at Christmas and they're having a conversation and my brother's telling a heartbreaking story to my grandma and the house phone rings, my grandma will cut him off dead, <laughs> run and answer that phone because that's how older demographics work. You go and answer your phone. Meanwhile, if my brother was listening to my grandma, my grandma was telling a very emotional story about my now deceased grandpa, hypothetically, and somebody called his phone, my brother had no clue it was ringing because that thing is silenced in his pocket and he is not answering that dang thing, right? Where my grandma's cell phone is on the loudest, they got ringers for her that I don't even know existed. All right, loud as hell. Like they got, I think I'd have like, I don't know, I jokingly have said they have boomer phones for my grandma where like the speakers are eight times louder. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> yeah. the point is demographically people behave in different ways. When we go look at young people, millennials, uh, most millennials and Gen Zers, they don't answer the phone period compared to what they used to compared to older demographics. And as a guy who used to coach and train people on picking up a phone and using dialer to call people, what this really meant was we had to really pivot. How do we play this game? Now, when we're talking about this, again, we're talking about putting your lead conversion on autopilot. I'm not saying that you can never call leads and never get on the phone with leads. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that the cool change that has happened is people read and respond via, to text messages at incredibly high response rates and read rates. Um, when we look at read rates, they're usually 99%, meaning that all text, 99% of them get read. Response rates on our worst performing plans that we've ever created and measured usually are around a 50 to 60% response rate. Some of our highest response rates are around 90 to 95%, which is just stupid, frankly. Those numbers are dumb. Um, but that's the world we live in. Things mm -hmm. are changing. So... Jackie, um, why don't you, anything you want to add to that, by the way, things you want to add? No, 100%. And, you know, when you talked about the not calling, that is a lot. I get that pushback a little bit sometimes. Like, you don't want anybody to call. And I think it's just because we're so used to that notion that that's, the, that's how we're going to get connected with leads, even though we also are texting at the same time. And, you know, I will say that we do welcome the calls. And I'm curious your thought on that. But yeah. only after we're allowing the automation to do some of the work for us, right? Like, let's leverage our time first, especially when it comes to pay-per-click leads that have that longer term conversion play anyway. I mean, we looked at it, it was over 600 days. So let the automation do the work. But if you get, especially in the seasons now, when we're, do, when we're in this shift, this separation season that you talk about, mm -hmm. it's going to be that much more important that you're letting the automation do the work. But when you have these leads that are still uncontacted, that now that's when you're going to want to do that additional work, right? You're going to want to make those phone calls or send manual messages in, in hopes to try to connect with them outside of the automation art already running. Yeah. And, and what I always recommend is people should MVP it because every community is a little bit different. Every market's different and usually it trends with demographics. Um, the easiest way I would describe it is I were in Naples, Florida, yep. which is attracting people like my grandma. I'm a heck of a lot more likely to prioritize calling compared to texting. Um, if I'm in Denver, Colorado, one of the youngest growing cities, America, much different story, different demographics. You gotta MVP it, you gotta make some assumptions, adjust. MVP for y'all that don't know is the idea of minimal viable product, which is simply the idea that instead of going all in on something, you try something a little bit, get some feedback and adjust. It's one of the best business principles that, that we've learned to master. Um, and Rachel on our coaching team calls us on it all the time, always MVP things. So um, really good stuff there. Um, I want to hit us on the real quick um, before we get into some more, more stuff here. 
lead conversion actually to me is again it's a simple simplify it it's really based on, on two key metrics or two key things one is the number of conversations that you have and two is the quality of those conversations in other words it is the balance of improving in terms of efficiency and effectiveness for the most part today what we're going to be talking about is efficiency when we're talking about automation automation is all about the idea of making things as efficient as possible. And really what it comes down to is efficiency is about saving time. It's about cutting out dead time, doing you know, menial tasks that are pointless, um, that allows you to really engage in more conversations. The whole point of lead conversion is to increase the amount of conversations you're having with people. That's it. That's the point. Everything we're talking about, that's your main rule. Increase the conversations. And I'll say this. You can have a million conversations, but if you're terrible at having those conversations, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about it at the very end uh, on how my thoughts on that. But today, I want to talk about putting lead conversion autopilot, which is all about making things more efficient. Jackie, mm -hmm. you know, tell people a little bit about what we've been doing uh, for people um, in Sierra specifically at the highest level, um, and a, a little bit for people that are using pub and call action, as well as um, Chime. So yeah, so just in terms of the systems packages that we have, is that what you're talking about, Robbie? Just kind of yeah, breaking I, it down I, I into. Do, I, I I don't want it to be a sales pitch to people. But no. Tell them about the plans that yeah. Yeah. Uh, if we if we sales pitch you, you can pitch slap us. Yes, please. Uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But tell them about the plans and what they look like because I haven't talked about those things in a minute. So I'll let you you explain it far better. Sure. You know, one of the things that I love the most about what we have within the system is that there's not one conversation that you can have with leads or one situation that they bring to you that doesn't fit somewhere within the messaging plans that we've created. And so what is so great is that when I'm talking to, you know, leads or not leads, when I'm talking to, you know, clients that come to me and want to learn more about what we're doing, there's this frustration there that's really saying, you know, I have so many, you know, leads coming into the database and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with them. I don't have any time or I have all I have all of these teammates here, all of these agents and we're bringing in so much but we're not converting. So what can we do about that? And it's simply because we're not superheroes, even though we want to be, right? We're only one person with multiple different pulls on us all day long. And yeah. so really we have, you know, there's new action plans or new messaging that we have in the system that allows us to help make that initial contact. So you're thinking about when, you know, first the leads come in through all different lead sources, how can we get to them immediately? How can we reach out to them and try to build off of the momentum of them looking at properties? Um, but it goes more than just 10 days of reaching out to them. It's actually going to continue to reach out and help us again, leverage our time and scale how many people we can talk to because it runs for that year's time. Yeah, can, and yeah, then that time on, on that real quick. Yeah. One of the biggest things that I think is an absolute must and everyone needs to hear it today. I'm a firm believer. It, it doesn't even matter if you're in Naples. <clears throat> um, you got to be texting leads, right? And there are some people out there, Jackie, that still manually send messages periodically to start conversations. And it is one of the biggest wastes of manpower I've ever seen. So here's the biggest thing that you need to be doing to make sure your, your lead conversion is on autopilot is you gotta be using a CRM or a system that allows you to input messaging plans and send those messages automatically. Now, as you all can see here, I'm a major fangirl of Sierra Interactive because it works incredibly well. Um, it shows delivery and the delivery responses, meaning if it doesn't get delivered, we get told about it so we can adjust mm -hmm. and look into the problems that might exist. From what I know, almost no other CRMs do that. They don't tell you if things aren't working. In other words, it's transparent. You can send gifts through Sierra, voicemails, texts, and emails all in one place. Um, other great options would be Chime has decent stuff. I don't think you can put gifts 
in the messaging plans, but you can do voicemails and text and emails. Um, I think there's some add-ons you have to add. And then if you're using a follow-up box, which is probably one of the best CRMs out there as well, unfortunately, they don't have built-in texting, but you can add on call action um, and use that to send out messaging. Um, so those are different, different options. My point behind that is if you don't have automated messaging capabilities, you are getting killed on speed to lead. And lead conversion gets broken down into three key metrics I always look at. Speed to lead, speed to response, speed to service. Speed to lead is how quickly are you getting to a lead. And here's what's cool with automated texting. Speed to lead gets cut down to immediately or a minute later. So it's always standardized. Number two is speed to response. This is the one where you got to have good people because a speed to response is Jackie responding to a lead that has responded to a messaging plan. And the number three is speed to service. How quickly can you get in front of somebody and meet face to face, whether it's a consultation, a strategy session, or maybe just a showing coffee date, whatever the heck you're going to do. Uh, but Jackie, I needed to rant on that because if you don't have those capabilities and there's others out there, I will say this, there are some out there that will send your messages and they're not actually sending them. And it's only when you inspect what you expect that you realize I'm getting screwed here. That's why I love Sierra. When I first came across them years ago, the transparency of the message showing delivered or not delivered, and if it goes undelivered, it tells us why it didn't get delivered. Um, that is so important in today's lead conversion game. I can't even imagine using a system that didn't tell me that, frankly. So anyways, I'm done ranting, Jackie. You well, and and then I'm thinking even too about the automations. I mean, what a big deal that Sierra just came out with as well. The ability to take a lot more off of uh, plates of agents. So even though you have all those capabilities to be able to do those voicemails and that's amazing stuff, they've just taken it one step further to be able to almost create anything you wanted in terms of an automation. And those automations are simply if this, then this, right? It's You can kind of think of it in terms of your routing rules. If a lead responds, then move it to this category pipeline or stage, right? And that's what Sierra is allowed to do. So it's just really great stuff because then you can, that's the autopilot we're all looking for, for sure. Well, and, and so let's talk, you, you, Jackie, you talked about new lead plans, which we have a plan for, you name a lead source, we got a plan for it. Yeah. Even open house leads, only when they've signed up on an iPad and explicitly opted into receiving messages, because that's one thing where people get themselves into trouble is, you can't use automated texting software to message people that have not opted in without opening yourself up to massive legal liability. And I do not suggest it, uh, suggest it. Know that I always take the most conservative approach because I get to help coach and lead Hatch Realty, which we are the 10,000 pound gorilla in our market, which means every other gorilla is trying to kill us. So we get turned in over the stupidest things in the world. I always take the most conservative approach because we have a lot to lose and that's what I communicate to everybody. Um, but we don't just have stuff for new leads, Jackie. Why don't you dive into the other types of plans we have as well? Well, there's always two parts, I feel like, especially whether you're transferring over from different CRMs or you just are getting started with a messaging system is, what do I do about all my old leads? Great, I have all my new stuff. What about the old? And that's, that's going to take more time, but our action plan for that is fantastic because it will really reach out to both sides of the transaction, right? It's not just going to simply say, are you looking to buy? Are you looking to sell? It'll reach out to both sides by asking if you're you know, interested in making a move. And that's so key because we're trying not to look like we don't know what we're doing. And so verbiage there is really great. Plus, we've talked about, you know, everybody wanting more seller leads. We need more seller leads. Where can we get them? Well, they're in your database as buyer leads. And so what's so great is just to be able to start to put this plan on those types of leads that you already have. And I like to say old leads or leads you had prior to getting any messaging plans to be able to reach out with them, right? Because you just simply haven't. Um, I've talked with folks that are like, listen, I have a database of 20, 30. I even had like 90,000 deep in there. And you're like, 
okay, you know, there's business in there. You've invested so much money to be able to, you know, provide for your team uh, and to really crush some goals, but it doesn't matter again, just like you said about if you're not having good conversations, none of this matters. Same thing. It doesn't matter how much you're spending if you're not doing anything with it uh, because you maybe were only looking for low hanging fruit or something. So now that's in there, we're, we're able to reach out to those leads and see how we can help them. And what I love is that even if it's a no, I love that. <laughs> like, because now I can move you to the appropriate place that you need to go within the database. I can organize you appropriately um, and, and then move on. So it's that theory of next, right? Being able to just move to the next lead and, and see how we can help. Well, it's so funny about that is that perfectly parlays into the third type of messaging plan that we've really created, which is our not interested lead plans. This is my most favorite, by the way. I don't know if you know that, but I do. It's my favorite, but go ahead. <laughs> but it, it is really not interested. What we need to realize is someone saying no today doesn't mean it's no forever. It's a not now for almost everybody. Statistically, everybody's moving every seven years. That's the kind of number. So we created a not interested plan and that plan runs for 10 years. People have asked me, what do I do when it ends? And I said, I don't know. We'll all be in 10 years, friends. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, that, that, that lead 10 years from now, I've been in the game for eight years. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, but it runs for 10 years. <clears throat> but more importantly, it reaches out very softly and basically says, Hey, Jackie, we had spoke a while back and I know you weren't interested in making the move. I just wanted to follow up and see if your plans have changed at all. And what I love about that plan and the reason it puts it on autopilot is it creates almost, almost like God moments where you text somebody or email them six months later, a year later, it's basically every six months. And it just happens to be that something maybe exciting happened. And they're like, crazy. We just started talking last night, like we should maybe go buy a, buy a home. And then he got that message. Um, or I just walked into my wife sleeping with the UPS guy. This is a real response, by the way. I need to talk right now, right? God moments, things that are unpredictable. And that's what I know about <clears throat> life is it's unpredictable. Are you going to get every single person? No, goodness, gosh, no. But that's not the goal, right? Remember with... A lot of lead sources, you convert at 1%, you're killing it. And what we've seen is people that take this stuff and run with it, they convert. Um, I thought we were the highest. Somebody surpassed us using our software at 6% conversion on their PPC leads, which the profitability on that is just stupid because yeah. it really is about half to 1% is usually you break even. Everything after that is free money, depending on how you measure it. Of course, you got to take into account tools and paying your agent, stuff like that. But the point behind it is the old lead plan helps you squeeze juice out of all those old opportunities, or not old lead plans, they're not interested plans. And it really helps you make money, frankly, in perpetuity. Um, and that's what's, uh, what's really cool. So um, I wanted to, to nail uh, on that piece real quick, Jackie. Sorry if I stole yeah, that. You favorite. did. That was my favorite one. No, but this is business you wouldn't have otherwise had anyway, right? Because yes. think about it. Are you going to check in every six months for 10 years? No, oh. right? Chances are the once we hear the I'm not interested or the lead never responded to me, we just pivot to the next opportunity and we don't do anything with it. And that's why I love this plan so much because you take two seconds, you apply it and you leave it alone. You don't ever have to think about it again. And it, to me, it's that cherry on top when all of a sudden you come in, whether you're the agent, the ISA, who is the, you know, the ISA, you come in and in my inbox, I remember this, I would Jackie, we're ready to, we're ready to move forward. Thanks for keeping in touch with me all this time. And I'm like, I have no idea who you are, you know, you have to like go to their file in the, in the CRM and take a look and you sure enough, like you can see that these uh, messages have been going out and it's from you. So they, they're, you're going to know about it if they're going to want to make a move. And, and that's, what's so great. We've all been there where an, a lead might have told you they're not interested. They're never going to buy. And then maybe without a system or process in place, we start to see, you know, oh, like we sorted by most activity, you know, um, most active. Uh -huh. And we see this lead, we go and we reach out and they're pending. And you're like, what? The, what? Like you told me you weren't interested. And so that's the beauty of this plan. That's why I love it so much. 
Mm-hmm. We can move I, on. <laughs> I, um, I, I did not know that you cared that much about not interested in Jackie. I did, I really, yes, I do. Yeah. Um, it, it is funny. I think you, you bring up such a, a valid point. I think this allows you to engage in conversation instead of spending your time and energy on trying to create that conversation. Yep. And that's the thing is back in the day, that wasn't possible. That's what's so cool about today is you can put so much of this on autopilot where you don't have to spend 50, 60% of your time with your head down, dialing and dialing and pounding your head against the wall, hoping someone would answer. Um, what you can do today, and I'm not saying never make calls. Again, I can't emphasize that enough, but you can make a really solid, you can be a really solid producer, never making calls. I know a lot of people that do it. I'm not saying <laughs> you should do that but I see a lot of it. Um, but that leads me to the, the fourth type of plans that we have, which is our fully automated plans. Yeah. Um, and it's really funny because I want you to share a little bit about those plans. And then I want to tell a, a story I heard from one of our clients yesterday about um, what happened with one of, the, one of those plans. Yeah, um, these are fantastic because we, again, have all been there where we've had really great conversations with leads. We've determined time frame that they're looking to make a move, but the issue is that it's not right now. There's a time gap, right? Six months, 12 months, two years. And so what we were seeing and what often happens is nothing because of that gap. And even with the best intentions where agents or ISAs are doing their part to set the reminder to give a call, the time comes and you're just one too busy, right? And you just don't do it because you haven't talked to them in years or however long, or you give a call and you get no answer because no relationship has been built between the last time you had a conversation. And we're missing some serious opportunities within the business. Mm -hmm. And so these action plans, these fully automated are designed to do that follow-up for you, which is crazy because we're all so accustomed to when we don't have a system that we need to do the chasing, right? So it's the same thing and the madness of having to set your first or send your first text or manually set your own, you know, to-dos. It's taking that off your plate. It's allowing the action plans to go out. What's great about these is these are voicemail campaigns um, where you're reaching out via text, you're reaching out via voicemail drop that you record in your own voice. Um, and, you know, which is very simple to do in the CRMs now with just the slide dials with we're just, you know, ringless voicemails, which are great. Long gone are the scary days of multi-line dialers, which always freaked me out. Um, And so now all you then have to do or what we're seeing happen is leads are responding to those messages that are coming back, right? There or that are going out. They're calling us, they're texting us. And now we can do the fun part and respond to those responses. Um, And what's really super cool is that your inbox turns into another form of lead gen, which I mean, I'm all about that. 100%. Um, So I I have a coaching client in, in Kansas City who yesterday told me that uh, she no longer puts any of her, what we call CRD, which is basically low quality, long-term follow-ups as manual follow-ups anymore because of what Jackie just said. It's so dang time consuming and you can't scale it. You can't scale the pipeline. You get, it gets so big that you get overlapped. And ISAs were typically better at chasing leads and agents because they could build a bigger pipeline. Well, uh, what we're seeing is ISAs paired with this, they can build a, a pipeline that is at least twice to three times as big as what it was when they're doing it all manually, um, at minimum. Um, so what she does is she puts them on these fully automated plans. And really what it comes down to is there's one that's one month, another that follows two months later, another version is three months, six, nine, 12, 18, 24. You get the gist. You just put them in the right plan and the voicemail drops. There's a text shortly thereafter. It seems like you just called and left a voicemail, but it never rang. Uh, which actually is preferred by a lot of people today. Um, So they get that voicemail, they get the text. And she told me that it was really funny because she just had someone who's going to do about, I think it was a million dollars in real estate uh, sales and purchasing. And it 100% came from, she spoke a while back, put them on this fully automated plan. It followed up with them and she just made sure to respond. Again, I think if, if I were to summarize what we're trying to do to put things on autopilot, 
is we're trying to eliminate any of the things that can be automated at scale to make people more efficient so they can focus on having and being in conversation. Because that's where you really make your money um, is in those conversations, whether it's an agent, an ISA, Rainmaker sometimes, I don't care, it doesn't matter to me. But we want to eliminate all the dead time, all the stupid time that we used to have to take to creating the conversation, whether that's the first time or following up at a later date or following up with your old leads that weren't interested. And, and that's the whole point of it. So, um, Jackie, anything we're missing there about putting lead conversion on autopilot? I think you're, you're spot on when you're talking about still having to respond. So that's a big question that I often get asked is like, what is my part in this? And do I have to do something with this? Um, and I think, I mean, I know we're a big believer in still having, you need to still build the connection, right? That still needs to be a hundred percent on you. And what these action plans do is allow you to make that initial contact. It allows you to scale and, you know, automate the follow-up that you're doing or get business you wouldn't have otherwise had because of those not interested. And now your job is solely to respond to the responses, right? Obviously making sure each day we're putting plans, uh, leads on plans if you have a lot of old leads in the system, but respond to the responses. And then based off of that, put them someplace else within the flow chart of the system. Um, and it just really helps you build a pipeline I don't know if I've ever talked to you about this, Robbie, but you know how some, I feel like when we're focused on low hanging fruit all the time, which yep. I hate, by the way, it builds uh -huh. kind of this roller coaster business for agents, right? Uh -huh. Where you have really, really great seasons and then really slow seasons. I mean, I know here the world's been <laughs> crazy lately, but usually uh -huh. yep. what allowing, what, you know, organizing things within your database helps you do, and I'm sure we'll dive more into this, but being able to put leads on plans your plans on leads mm -hmm. is now going to allow you to really build your pipeline out so that gone are the days of that roller coaster effect and more of the conveyor belt, which I want for everybody, where it's this consistent business where once you start to get all of these items on the conveyor belt, I don't know how you really truly shut it off because it just continually feeds ah. you. And I am excited yeah. about that for you. Yeah, that's, that's an analogy that uh, I've never heard someone say the conveyor belt. So that's, uh, that's really huge because that's, I think, really what it's doing. It's putting those conversations mm -hmm. on the conveyor belt for you. Um, and it's basically, it doesn't stop once you get started. It's pretty, yeah. you're, you're building future conversations. Um, I think the, the last thing I want to make sure that to circle back to is the other cool thing, and this is exclusive to Sierra, uh, for our Sierra users that we've been working with, um, we, Sierra released automation suite. And what we've been trying to do is try to cut out all the minutia crap that you have to do with lead, within lead conversion. So really lead conversion, I think, comes down to you engaging in conversation. Well, number one would be creating the conversation. Someone or something has to be doing it. We're trying to automate as much as that possible, as possible, I should say. Secondly is the conversation. And then number three is organizing the database, yeah. right? And the second thing, which happened to be my middle finger, so I'm gonna change my finger. <laughs> the second thing um, that the conversation, I don't think anything beats a empathetic, licensed, quality human being. I really don't, whether it's an ISA or an agent, I think that that is best. Although I have seen some very poorly trained, poor conversations from people. Do I think there's AI programs out there, things like structurally, am I a fan? Yes, it's not as good as Jackie in a conversation. It is good when Jackie's too busy. That's my, my belief on it. Um, so what that really means is that second piece, the conversation is best dealt in a highly skilled need conversion ninja's hands. What I do think we are trying now to automate as much as possible now is that third part database organization. It used to be, we would teach people, here's how you organize the database. Now we're trying to automate the creating of the conversation and the organization of the database. And here's what that really looks like is 
in Sierra, when Jackie puts someone on a plan, it automatically updates the status, the tag instantly. Well, it takes like two seconds. Um, so it's technically that instantly, but it updates the lead and puts it in the right place for you when you put it on a plan. So instead of you having to remember plan, status, putting in the notes, instead of doing all that, tagging, stuff like that, all you put your notes in and you update the plan. And when you put that plan on, it does the rest for you. Um, and I think this is what's going to be really, really cool. We're even to the point now where we just released new automations that when a plan ends, like somebody goes on a new, new lead plan, that runs for a year. When that plan's done, it automatically moves it into our archive and non-interested plan. So it moves it out of everything for you. So I think that's the, and this is brand new to us. We just started doing this, what, a month ago, essentially, you were take. This is the autopilot piece that we're trying to put as much as possible in autopilot, which is creating the conversations, updating the database. I mean, there's a little you have to do, but nowhere near probably 20% of what you used to. But we want people to be in conversation with these. We're trying to cut out the front end, the back end, so you can scale more leads coming in, which means more conversations long term, which means more opportunities. And Jack, your, your analogy is creating this conveyor belt of opportunities that your people have to, to really crush. Anything you want to add to that, Jackie? No, I mean, you know what I love more than the not interested <laughs> is that pipeline, is that organizational piece of things, because that's, I mean, organization is a love language for me. Sure. And so to be able to have some sort of process where not only can you leverage and scale the amount of people that you're reaching out to, but now things are organized. Because what I have found is that whenever we feel overwhelmed, and truly you can say in any area of your life, we don't want to take action. We just are like, forget it. And that is the wrong way to approach definitely <laughs> lead management in the CRM. Yeah. It's funny because I honestly think half the value of all the stuff we've done is simply putting people on automated plans because what I found is people have called or initial attempt reluctance, but they rarely have any reluctance when a message is sitting in their inbox. So they go and respond. The problem for a lot of our users is almost always the opposite of what most people is, which is I'm talking to too many people. I'm overwhelmed, yes. um, which is a much different problem <laughs> to have. It's still a problem, um, especially people are like, I have all these old leads and they put too many leads on the planet once. Next thing you know, they have 200 people responding. They'll ever try to manage 200 conversations at once. Don't wish that upon anybody. Don't do it. Uh, and we're very clear. We give you guidelines on this because we've learned people still deviate sometimes and don't listen to us. That's their own problem to deal with. But um, I'm not an I told you so person, but that's the one where I'm like, Jackie isn't, but I am. I told you so. Um, <laughs> yes. so don't do it. Uh, I, I will. I will say you should have listened. Yep. Um, Jackie's kinder than I am. Um, but here's the biggest thing that I'll say is about half of the top real estate teams in the country are using messaging are using our messaging plans if not more and whether it's in one of the platforms we talked about earlier a lot are in sierra and really we're just trying to give people tools to convert and engage with leads at a, at a really high level um, if that's something you're interested in uh, reach out talk to jackie um, jackie live the live breathes and, and dies this stuff but i had to take a little bit of time today um, to talk about the conversation um, because again, everything we talk about putting on autopilot um, is uh, where can we go get back to plans? Reach out to us. Um, Jackie, put your email in real quick, the chat. Um, so people have your email, Jackie at hatchcoaching.com. Email Jackie, she'll, uh, she'll talk to you about next steps. Um, and any questions you guys have, let us know. But um, the next big thing is you got to have really, really good conversations. And what's really interesting is the old school mantra when I got into real estate was script, 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 script. Here's a script book, blah, 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 blah. And it was all trash. It was all terrible. And it used to work. Scripts used to work way back in the day um, when there wasn't transparency in the markets, when you could push, manipulate, sell. Um, 
don't get me wrong, there's certain questions or things that you need to know, but I think the best script in the book is as a general whole, tell me more. Meaning our whole philosophy, what we train and preach to our teams, what Jackie and I live, and what I've trained a lot of the top lead conversions in the country to do is find out somebody's core motivation, their why, find out what they're running from or running towards or the combination of both, and understand that before you ever ask for an appointment. Because it's very simple. When you find out their why, you leverage that why as the reason to help them, for them to meet with you to help them get what they want, um, which is running through something that's much deeper than what I just said. And what it really comes down to is old school scripts don't really, um, don't really work like they, they used to. Um, in this day and age, we got to be digging in deeper, asking more questions. Um, but what's really unique is this market is shifting and using tell me more in this market regarding people's initial objections isn't working. Um, so let me just give an example. In this market, what we're seeing is more and more buyer leads are hesitant, concerned, resistant, uh, normalizing. Yep, thank you, Andy. <laughs> uh, this market is normalizing. There's more fear than we've seen in a while. And let's be real. Real estate hasn't been hard the last two years. It's been a lot of work. It hasn't been hard. It hasn't required a lot of skill. Um, and what we're seeing is more and more resistance when talking to people, um, especially for the first time. So when people are getting contacted via text or on the phone, you're hearing more objections of I'm not buying right now because we're in a bubble. I'm not buying right now because the market's going to crash. I'm not buying right now because things are overpriced. I'm not buying right now because the world's too crazy. I'm not buying right now because of inflation. I'm not buying right now because of interest rates. There's just a lot of excuses um, that, I shouldn't even say excuses. There's a lot of reasons, a lot of objections you keep hearing. And if you use tell me more to that objection, what happens is that fear doesn't shrink, it gets bigger. And really what it comes down to is there's three things I see people doing that make things worse. They say they believe people when they have that objection. It's a terrible idea. Number two is they ask, tell me more. And what happens is that gets bigger. Or number three, they try debating that person. They try telling them why um, now is a better time to buy because interest rates are still at historical lows or they tell them why the market's not going to crash. In other words, they try debating emotion with logic. Anyone that's in a married relationship knows that's a terrible idea. It doesn't work. Um, so here is the thing that you all should take away from today. I think you all need to master, and we just had a whole call with our Hatch Sierra system users that I really hammered this, but right before this call, um, you need to master the art of the pivot. The art of the pivot is the idea that when someone brings up an objection like that, you feed it almost no energy. You have to treat it almost like your toddler having a freak out. You can't feed it energy because if you feed it energy, it gets worse. Rather, what you need to do is you have to pivot around it. So you acknowledge it like, I totally understand that, Jackie, or I appreciate that perspective, Jackie. What had you interested in homes to begin with? You have to get really, really good right now at having backup questions to circle around and pivot around people's surface level fear-based objections. And here's why, when you do that, Jackie will say something like, well, we were thinking about getting a bigger home, but we were not gonna be able to afford it in today's market because of interest rates. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I totally understand that, Jackie. Help me uh, get some clarity on why you were wanting to get a bigger home. And Jackie then says, blah, 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 blah. She's maybe expecting, or maybe baby's on the way, or family's growing, or going through a divorce. Jackie is not expecting or going through a divorce. These are just examples, <laughs> just to be clear. The point is, is that life happens. Your goal is to find out what is happening in people's lives. You get to circle around it. Um, so, this is the big key. I think over the next six to 12 months, as more objections come up, I'm getting excited because in the last two years, buyers have been desperate, leads have been desperate. And when they're desperate, you don't have to be good. 
when they're not as desperate, which is the season we're entering, you got to be good again. And here's why I get excited about this. Your competition is not going to get better. Your competition is going to get worse. Their skills are going to erode and they're going to drop out of the business. That leaves more fish for us to catch, more opportunities for us to move with. Jackie, you want to add anything to that? Yeah. So when you're talking about these questions, you know, it's all of that and the shift in the market and having to get good again. It's about really pushing past that surface level no or objection that we're going to get and ask more questions. And again, I think this goes back to that conveyor belt analogy, right? You're only ever going to have the ebbs and flows if you take it at face value and say, okay, got it. That makes sense. You know, and, and as agents, you're exhausted as well because you've been dealing with the market for, you know, what it's been. And and it makes sense. Sure. Interest rates are rising, inventory is low, but you have to push past that so that you can follow up with leads down the line. Your role now is changing to that of just let's set the appointment and, and go show the house. Now you have to, we, we say that ISAing is like being a gold digger. And it truly is in the sense if you've all seen the Alaskan show, right? That you make this big mess, this big hole just to find a couple nuggets of gold. That still is true today where we're gonna to have to do that in the system. But you're also, Robbie, and you've said this before, you have to be a farmer. So it's all about planting seeds that will grow for you later, that you can harvest later. And through doing that, by asking really fantastic questions, continuing to ask questions and pivoting and overcoming objections, putting plans on leads that can help assist you to follow up, you're going to be able to do that later, where everybody else is just giving up. Like you're here today because you're not going to give up, right? That's so. I love that. Good stuff, Jackie. Um, <clears throat> all right. So last couple of things um, I just want to, to name real quick, and then I see a few questions. Uh, so first off, again, putting lead conversion autopilot, automate as much as possible. You got to have automated texting in this day and age or else you're in trouble um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, secondly, you got to be having really good conversations. Um, this leads me to um, some stuff I'm doing in June. Um, long story short, I always tell people, Jackie alluded to, to one of them, lead converters wear four different hats. And frankly, they've been wearing two the last two years and they forgot how to wear two others. Um, the four different hats are one being a gold miner, digging through dirt to find gold, right? That's going and climbing up the tree and finding the high hanging fruit. So that's a first. People really haven't been doing that recently. You're going to have to get back to doing that again, digging deeper. Number two, Jackie said it, farming planting seeds, making sure that you're watering them, and then harvesting later. Number three is gathering the fruit, right? You got to be gathering the fruit um, as quickly as possible when it comes to the table. And then number four, you got to be a hunter. And here's what I'm excited about is we're entering a phase where FISBOs, expires and canceled matter again. They haven't mattered for two years. In a shifting market, when expectations aren't met, people will cancel. And that's free money for you all. So in June, starting June 3rd, on Fridays, I'm doing a lead conversion boot camp. It's four weeks. Um, and uh, it's one cost for your whole team. So you pay, if you have 12 team members, you just pay for one login and your whole team can attend. And I'm going super deep into how do you have conversations in the shifting market. Uh, here's a guarantee I'm telling everybody, if you sign up and actually attend all four, all four sessions and you don't think it was worth your money i will give you every dollar back all right no risk here um it's gonna be four hours of me giving you everything that's in my head on how you can master the conversation dispelling the myths getting you in the right mindset giving you the scripts aka the best questions so um i'll drop the link in here for you all um i just sent that out um, all right. The question here that someone had was about AI. I would, our leads get a text instantly. And this is from Andy. I'm afraid I might call them too quickly. I get you're probably right about that. I would agree with you. With PPC leads, you're almost always right. Texting outperforms calls in almost every single market. So you're probably right about that. Uh, also, got to be a farmer, crop grower, 20 inch blades on my lawnmower. That sounds like a rap uh, or a poem or a country song. I don't know. I don't know, but I like it. 
I like it. Good stuff. All right, my friends, much love. Um, we're going to wrap up there today. Check out that boot camp. If you have any questions about messaging systems, um, all that good stuff, let us know. And we'll talk later. See you, Jackie. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.